Remember the old saying they taught you in wood shop in high school? Measure twice, cut once. Kind of similar. Read twice, pour once. Right here, I have two bottles of fluid. They're kind of similar, and I mixed them up. And I'll show you what happened because of it. <laughs> One is dot for a brake fluid. One is power steering fluid. Now, thank Christ I did not put the power steering fluid in my brake system because it would be toast. But I did put dot for a brake fluid in my power steering. It took about a month to notice it once I realized the rack was pouring fluid out at the end of the rack. Um, nothing you can do about it. There's no seam swellers in it. There's no seal swellers in uh, brake fluid because you don't want your brake lines to swell. You don't want your brake pistons to get stuck and swollen. There's no lubricants really in brake fluid. I pumped the system dry. I flushed it three times. Yeah, no. So, uh, new steering rack. So that's what we'll be doing today. And in the future, <laughs> we'll be reading twice and pouring once. They're ridiculously similar if you don't like I just looked at the Mercedes, Porsche, VW, Audi, blah, blah, blah. On the bottom, it was a purple bottle. Eh, what can you do? Anyway, um, power steering rack, 2006 Cayenne Touareg Q7. Same difference. Doesn't matter if you have variable assist steering or the base steering like I have in mine. Uh, it's all going to be pretty much similar. The only difference is going to be an electrical connection. It's not super hard. It's... I lucked out and found a rebuilt rack for 350 bucks cash and the guy delivered it to my work. How much better can you get than that? Um, couldn't even find a used one at a wrecking yard for that price. So I just, you know, the car gods were smiling down at me as they were laughing at me. So uh, anyway, we'll be back with this in a sec. Okay, so wheels off on the front, obviously. Jacked up from the regular jacking points, tires underneath as an extra. Uh, mode of precaution, uh, you're going to be lowering the subframe a couple of, like, an inch. You'll know, be taking the subframe bolts out, just the rear subframe bolts, lowering them to get access. I've lubricated the tie rod ends, and what I'm going to be doing is measuring from where the boot starts to where the nut is now, so that I've got my alignment as close as I can possibly get it. Uh, I'm going to have to take this into align an alignment shop, obviously, afterwards, but to be as close as I can to drive there. Um, I'm going to measure this distance here on each side and transfer it to, uh, hey, want to see my rack? Look at this. So there's my rebuilt rack, and I'm going to transfer that measurement from here to here on this inner tie rod. So this has got all brand new inner tie rods, all new seals and bushings, uh, new boots, 350 bucks, to be honest. Um, you can barely buy the parts for that price. So, uh, yeah, anyway, um... So the steering gear is on the driver's side and the no steering gear, passenger side. If you have Servotronic adjustable steering or the uh, variable steering, there will be a little motor thingy attached here that will um, adjust the pressure on your steering. And uh, there'll be like an electrical connection to it and that's gonna be the only difference. This has just got a, an in and an out and that's it. I've uh, took a piece of cardboard and Put it around my return hose, which is the really, really flexy one from the uh, reservoir, and put a pair of uh, vice grips around it just to keep most of the fluid from coming out and dripping all over my head. I don't care about the fluid itself, I just don't want it all over me. And the last thing, put your steering wheel on the dead ahead center, steers or wheels before you take them off, make sure they're dead ahead. Steering wheel in center, pull the key out so it locks in place. Um, so you have some reference point to start at because you're going to be unhooking the steering gear where it hooks up to the, uh, um, the, what do you call it? <laughs> Not the CV joint, the flexible joint or the universal joint where it hooks up to the top of the steering gear there all the way to the steering shaft. So you're going to be unhooking that and then it's going to be able to flop around. So you want to make, just make sure it's centered and make sure this rack is centered before you start. And it probably is going to come centered, pre-centered. I don't think it's going to. I'm going to try moving it left and right and see if there's a center point on it. I don't believe there is. I think it's centered as it is. 
but I'll, I'll just measure the the boots how far they stick out from the rack and see if uh, everything's kosher so I'll be back in a second after I've measured and then uh, loosened the uh, lock nuts on the uh, on, on the tie rods okay so on your tie rods both the flat spot on the tie rod where you hold the tie rod steady is going to be a 24 as well the nut so i had an alignment done like a year ago hopefully this won't be too ridiculous no and they're not i'm going to measure that nut when i take it out as long as i don't move it it'll be fine and now we have to remove the lower tie rod bolt i believe that's a 22 or is it a 24 as well i think it's a 22 back in a sec okay bottom uh tie rod bolt is a 22 i would suggest taking it all the way off so that the threads are you know that the nut's going to come off the threads if you don't once you loosen the ball joint the taper might not hold the uh, nut in place That bolt will a be ridiculously hot ow <laughs> and uh the threads will be clean so now you can once you whack on this you'll be able to just remove the tie rod in and we'll be back whacking in two secs big hammer mallet whatever you got whack on the steering knuckle not the tie rod steering knuckle right here give it a few sharp whacks and then try pulling up on it and see if it releases. If it doesn't, we'll just put a jack under there and put a little upward pressure on the arm so that it will release. Oh, nice. Uh, do the other side and we'll be back. Okay, for our next trick, we're gonna remove the steering gear bolt, which is, oops, that bolt right there in front of my finger. It's a 16 mil on mine. It could be a little bit different on yours. I'm on the driver's side of the vehicle or left side of the vehicle depending on what country you're in and uh, that's just a little bolt goes through the uh, steering shaft that goes up to your steering column and uh, holds that to the rack at the top and you can see the two lines that are going there so we're going to loosen that pull the bolt out and then just lift the uh slide that there's a slip joint on the uh, steering column you just slide that up and off um, and i don't really have enough uh, space in here to show you this but it's just through the uh, driver's side wheel well see that bolt there 16 millimeter and back in two secs okay so reaching around behind the subframe it's easy enough to get a ratchet on this shouldn't be on there too tight and it's not I might as well just keep filming <laughs> yeah sure use a flexible flexible head ratchet down here oh come on like I said it shouldn't be remarkably tight and it's I don't think it is I'm just I need both hands to hold this wrench on the, uh, the nut. I'm going to remove that and back in two secs. Okay, bolts loosened. Let's take the bolt out and then slide the slip joint up. It should go right up off the rack. There's a slip joint at the top. It's like a cloverleaf shaped. There we go. <laughs> Push that up as far as you can and it should stay in place. Maybe you can see that from under the car. Ah, uh, maybe not. Anyway, she's up there. Now we're going to remove this little bolt here that holds the uh, the the racks or the uh, uh, the line support to the steering rack. So we're going to remove those, and then the last thing will be the two lines right there. See them? Ah, one, two, black one. 
rusty one. Rusty one bottom, black one top. And other than that, there are two bolts holding the steering rack in, one right here, and it's twin on the other side. And then two subframe bolts on top of my head. One there, one over there, jack underneath, and we'll lower the subframe, slide the rack out that way. But first we have to get those, uh, the little rack support bolt and, or the uh, line support bolt and the two lines off. Uh, I'm not sure the line size, but this looks like a 10, if you ask me. Back in a sec. Okay, now for the 10 millimeter line support bolt. Oh, dirty. I wonder if I should leave that on there as support for the lines while I'm loosening it. You know what? That's probably a better idea. I'm going to tighten that back up and leave it so I can support. So there's more support for the lines while I'm turning the uh, nuts off the power steering lines. That would be a better idea. And let me be back with a line wrench. Okay, so let's find the size of these I'm shooting at a 17. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, that's not extremely tight. Thank God. Okay, so that's the lower line. Just gonna back and forth to make sure it's nice and loose. It doesn't have any tight spots. And, oh, the top one. Huh. Try and get that from the back. So if you have a line wrench, they're always the best to use. A line wrench is like a closed end wrench with a little bit of an open end. And they're always uh, six sided. And so it makes it a better purchase on the bolt. You could also use a duck's foot or crow's foot, whatever people call them, which attaches to it. This one's a 3 8 inch, so it just attaches to a socket, and then you turn it like a socket. That should. I'm gonna leave you guys running while I do this. <laughs> I'm gonna go underneath and see if I can get this from the back. Maybe I do have to take that support off before I get the second line. Bear with me while I get at this from underneath. I'm gonna try the duck foot first. I believe they're the same size. Yep. Did that just loosen? No. Tell me that just loosened. Okay. <laughs> Makes no sense that the, I'm not getting screwed on anything today. How does that make sense? Where'd my 17 go? Let's see if I can loosen this by hand. Is it that loose? Oh my God, you're kidding me. <laughs> Come on, ducky. Let's go at number two and loosen that. I hope my fat head's not in your way. I have no way of telling. If it is, throw something at me. Oh, I need to start at the bottom. Right under these lines, so any fluid that comes out is, ah, uh, oh, damn it, I see it's starting to drip. It's gonna be dinner for me. Yum. Okay. I'm gonna loosen that 10 again. Can I, why did I put you just out of harm's reach? Sorry. Don't stand so close, damn it. Oi. Oh, 
And the most difficult part of this job is appearing to be almost done. <laughs> Who'd have frickin' thunk it? Oy. Sorry, I know I'm in your way now, but I gotta take this little bolt out. Okay, little holdy bolt. I would assume <laughs> that's a C-shaped clip. Yeah. I'm going to finish removing these and uh, I'll turn you guys off so you don't have to share the pain of watching this. But I'll remove these two lines. This one is fine, but I can't get the other one by hand. Here comes the Exxon Valdez. Bad reference. Most of you aren't old enough to remember what the hell that is. simple 17 that I brought under here with me is, oh, there it is. I was going to say nowhere to be seen, but I just found it. You'll probably want to speed up past this part, or maybe I'll speed it up in the editing, but about as good as a chimp plays video games. Actually, they're probably pretty good at video games. Never mind that. I'm worse. Whatever worse than that is, I'm worse. Okay. Let me reach up and turn you poor bastards off. <laughs> I can't find that button. While I'm waiting for all that fluid to drip out so it's not all over top of me, I'm just taking the tie rod ends off. And these are good. I replaced these when I first got the car. Um, so they're like a year old. They've got like 10,000 kilometers on them. Obviously, if they're not nice and stiff, it's a good time to replace them. Hey, that was my, my nut. <sighs> on there so I don't lose it because I will I've already marked measured and marked on the new rack where the tightener bolt is gonna go oops and I'm gonna cheat and take it off with a 24 socket screw this one onto Look. the new rack. Now you can see my white mark there where I painted. It's it's not going to be exact on. You can count threads too if you want. It's another way if you don't need glasses like me when you're that close. So I measured from the boot to the outside of the nut, the inside of the nut, there to there on both sides and that's basically it. So we're gonna let that, all that power string fluid drain down and we're almost done. Carte d'huile if you're in France or Quebec. Um, oil pan if you're in Canada or Great Britain. If you're in Texas, it's an owl pan. And uh, yeah, just letting the fluid drip into that. There's quite a bit dripping out and I don't want to play in it. Otherwise, we're all ready to go. Okay, that pan's still dripping. I've moved one of my safety slicks to the uh, front so I can scooch in from the rear. And we're going to be using uh, the, the uh, 18 millimeter, I believe it is, to remove the two bolts on the rack and then a 21 to lower the subframe. I have a 
floor jack underneath the subframe in the very center to support the subframe when it comes down. See that mess? It's still just dripping. And I don't want to eat that, so I'm going to come in from the back and see what we can do. Uh, I'll get you set up down there. Okay, people, let's remove this rack. I'm going to take the two rack bolts out. They're 18 mils. I got to go under this way. I'm avoiding the oil slick. Two bolts, one right here in front of the uh, oil slick and the exact same one on the other side. As I said, 18s. Don't you spill on me. to check well of course there is there's another 18 millimeter bolt on the top i think Sorry guys, edit that out. Erase that from your mind. Blech. On top there's a, yeah, it's an 18. Boop, 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 boop. She's a longy. Okay. And same on the other side. Ooh, can I get to the back side of that one? Ooh, that one's not easy because you've got the... Hmm. Oh, snaggy time. And the front drive shaft comes in very close to the top of this bolt on this side, this nut. That might be another way from the front, maybe. Doesn't look like it. No. I have to get a... I have to get a regular 18 for the other side, not an offset. Okay, so on the passenger side, you can access that bolt straight on top of the rack back over there. You can't really get it from the back. You can get a wrench on it from this side and then squiggle under and uh, take the whole bolt out and then two 10 mils for the two little shields on the dust boot that shield it from the evil of the catalytic converters. So uh, I'll take those off. I won't bother filming that because you've seen the one side come out, the other side's the same, just a different position. And this is the position. Okay, passenger side bolt is now out. Not that tough once you find the angle, which is, again, from this side. The little heat shield is off, and the rack is essentially loose. And now these big subframe bolts, the two back ones, we're going to loosen with our floor jack still, of course, holding the subframe up. No need to take them all the way out. Looks 
guess I'm going to lower them about and let's see how far this comes out. Leave a couple threads in there for, whoops, safety. <laughs> so, get in there. And plus, it's going to be a bitch to lighten up if we don't. So there's one. I'll go to the other side. You'll be able to see me through there. I'll take off the other one. Okay, now I'm just going to leave the camera running. I'm just going to lower the jack, the floor jack a little bit and drop this down enough because this is going to be pulled out this way because we've got the steering gear. The big steering gear is up here and you won't be able to feel, feed it all the way that way. Let's try and weasel this thing out from this side. <sighs> it's be a lot easier with a hoist. You're one of those hoist people. I hate you. I hate you. Oh, my flashlight's dead. Getting another flashlight. Okay, so now we want to remove. Oh, they partly popped off. Pull these two lines away, and they're little safety clip thingy my dewey if it stays attached it stays attached let's just move them out of the way uno dos come on remember rusty's on the bottom he likes the bottom dirty rusty dirty boy oh what else do we have here what am i missing oh no that's the line Okay, so I should just be able to pull this sucker out. I'm going to set you up and we'll start yanking. Sounds great. Okay, needs must, so I might have to get in your way here. Hopefully not. We'll see what happens. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I was expecting that to give up a little bit of a fight like the other side. So we've got to rotate. We've got the knuckle that goes up to the top. We've got to rotate that down somehow what are we touching what are we touching i should go underneath be a lot easier I'm under there and i won't be in your way this is probably a two-man job boring Single spider monkey. Okay, baby. Time to evict. Figure out which way to twist it for best effect. Hmm. I can't see over there either.
I believe I have to lower the front subframe bolts tiniest bit because I'm not getting loosening the rear subframing taking weight off of it isn't bringing it down very much to be honest it's not giving me much room I don't think I've got enough room well maybe or not Should have thought about the watch a little earlier, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna lower, uh, loosen those two front subframe bolts to the exact same 21 mils, and that'll give us some more room. Um, I, I don't, I think that dropped maybe a centimeter at the back. That's just not enough room to get it out. I hope it helps. Back in a sec. Okay, guys. <laughs> Easiest way to get it out, you can't pull it out the driver's side. It just would not come. I couldn't turn it so that the nose of the steering box would turn all the way to the back or front. But push it all the way through to the passenger side and you can pull it straight down the middle of the subframe. And this is gonna come out now and we're gonna reverse and go back in. Any weird stuff that comes up, I'll let you know. But other than that, it's just gonna be uh, putting everything back together and I'll get you torque specs. Okay, all done. Uh, there's no weirdness to putting everything back in. Um, everything just went back together the same as it came apart. Old rack, new racks in. Uh, obviously needs an alignment. Um, bleeding the uh, power steering system. Uh, throw a whole liter in there or quart in. And then, well, the car's still jacked up. Crank the uh, steering wheels back and forth, back and forth to try and pump any air that's in the rack out of it um uh then once you've got it it'll suck the fluid down in and then just keep filling and filling and uh, then eventually start it still up, wheels up in the air go back and forth back and forth till you pump all the air out of the system so there's no bubbles coming out anymore uh, it's too hard to do it on the ground when it's uh because the first time you're doing it you're doing it with the engine off uh, which will help bleed it easier without being hard on the system without the uh uh, the, the fluid in the system being compressed by the pump. Um, torque, uh, the tie rod end, 75 foot-pounds. Uh, the nut on the bottom of the tie rod ends is 75 foot-pounds. The uh, subframe bolts are also 75 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees. So you turn it one full quarter turn. So 90 degrees is from here to here. So 75 plus a quarter. And the rack, pfft, snug it up as much as you can. There's no way to get a torque wrench on that because you don't torque bolts from the bottom bolt. You torque it from the nut and you can't get a torque wrench on that top nut on the passenger side. So it's pointless. Uh, tighten it, tighten it till you feel it's proper. <laughs> um, other than that, um, can't think of anything, but uh, I will let you know if anything weird happens. Uh, tomorrow is alignment. Thanks for watching.